Luke chapter 11. It's always been faithful. Good song. Well, for the crowd going out to the um, curbside care ministry, is that what we're calling it? Curbside care ministry. It has been brought to my attention. We're going to Mrs. Nicholas's. So somewhere in our curbside care ministry today, we need to sing happy anniversary. How many years is that, Brother Nicholas? How many years you've been married? 63 years. 63 years. That's pretty good, isn't it? Don't hear those much anymore, do you? That's some of the problem. It's the vast majority of the problem. 63 years. Praise the Lord. Amen. Don't, for, don't forget to sing that to her, all right? She'll appreciate that. Pray for Mrs. Nicholas. Did I say Luke chapter 11? I'm trying my best to figure out how to launch this boat. I'll do the best I can. Hebrews chapter 11. Let's read a few verses of Scripture and uh, see if the Lord can help us this morning. He's always been faithful, hasn't He? Amen. I've never been in a church service where they stood up and testified and somebody said He's not been. That's pretty good. I think I'll stick with Him. Luke chapter 11, verse 1. And it came to pass that as He was praying in a certain place, He being Christ, when He ceased, one of His disciples said unto Him, Lord... Teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. Wow. Boy, he was really trying to teach him something there, wasn't he? And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Verse 11. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father... Will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him. Let's pray. Father, we'd ask You to help us this morning. Such a large text, not in words, but in content. Oh Lord, there's so much in here. Uh, It'd take us years to just completely comprehend it, and I don't even have a a hold of it yet. We'd ask You to help us this morning, Lord, to, to show us our greatest need. Thank you for the local church. Thank you for the Word of God. And Lord, this morning specifically, thank you for the indwelling presence of the Spirit of God. I would ask you to help us this morning, Lord. Speak to our hearts. We're in need. Minister to where we're at. 
Help us in these days that we live in. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. Thank you for the foundation we have in you and the assurance that we have in you. Thank you, Lord, for being our Heavenly Father and the how much more that you have for us. Help us, I plead. Lord, I realize yet again you don't need me. I would ask you to help me this morning. I sure need you. Help us, I plead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I must say uh, that I thoroughly enjoyed my time away. It was nice just to relax with no responsibilities. Um, Joe, would you, would somebody, does somebody have keys to my office? I, ne- I know already I'm going to need a hanky. Here, Jacob, that's this key. If you sit at my desk, the first drawer right over here on the top is some hankies in there. I must say I thoroughly enjoyed my time away. It was nice to just relax with no responsibilities on my plate. I must say it is as well nice to just go to church without any feeling that it all falls upon you. If something goes wrong, it's not on me. I can just sit there. I can just elbow Libby and go, he looks like he's having a bad day today. Somebody must have caught him in the foyer. I can just pray for him. It's not on me. Here's another thing. I was talking to some preachers. The good thing about vacation is you can just leave after service. You, you know what that's like, don't you? You just get in your vehicle and you leave after service. Or you can stick around like some of y'all do in fellowship. It's your choice. No strings attached. Something else I was assured of and reminded of again this morning in the song. He is the same yesterday today, and forever. I'm glad to know that the church is not dead and He's still on the throne. Daily making intercession for us. Can you imagine that this morning when you thought nobody else cared about you? Jesus was making intercession for you? Praying for you specifically? What a Father. What an absolutely amazing Father that we have. One thing that was especially near and dear to me was the ability to just be of single mind and be able to listen. I walked every morning, early in the day. It's hard to explain, but most days I have my mind on a lot of things. Too many things, probably. Many times when I read or pray or just live, it seemingly is always focused on others. On a message, boy, it's not, it was nice to just wake up on a Monday and not have to do a message. Is that, is that okay for me to say that? I mean, sometimes, honestly, most of the time I open my Bible and I'm sitting there because, watch this, Brother Klausa, that need never stops. I mean, and there's churches you can go to and you can tell the preacher became overwhelmed with it because you get there and he has nothing on the table. You can tell, you ever just kind of crash in on somebody? Now, mama, you crash in on mama, she's going to say, sit down, and she's going to cook. It's not just pull something out of the refrigerator. And, uh, but you ever just sit down in some churches sometimes, you can just tell he just really, he must have been rushed. I try and give him grace sometimes. I say he must have had some funerals, must have had a lot of situations. Um, but really, the preacher's one responsibility is to preach or, or read, study the scriptures, and pray. And it was nice. Can I just say it unselfishly or selfishly that it was nice to just be able to read and not say, okay, i got to get a message. I just want it to soak in for me. Um, Getting away allowed me to be of single mind. And here's what was very important for me. Just listen for him. Do you know he wants to talk to us on a day-to-day basis? Isn't that amazing? There's probably people we know, family members we know, Sometimes even within our own house. Sometimes in this day of cell phones, you can just get so caught up in what's going on that you, you haven't talked to somebody in a while. It's nice to just not be distracted and just, just listen for him. Can I sound a little selfish for the moment? It's just nice to focus on yourself for a little bit. I wear a few hats and some days it gets the best of us, doesn't it? While I was away, there were several things the Lord specifically spoke to me about. Most of them were very personal. 
It was nice to hear many of the things that he said to me. I know why Isaiah said, um, oh, how's that go? Be weary. What's that? Run and not be. How's that go, Isaiah 40? They that wait, they, thank you, Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. That's just nice sometimes. Can I say this? He still speaks in a still small voice. Right. And with all the hustle and bustle of life, sometimes if you're not careful, mama raising a bunch of kids, uh, daddy busy with everything going on, if you do not find that time to speak to him, you'll, you'll, you'll burn out. You'll burn out. One thing that he spoke specifically to me about was in response to something I was talking to him about. And that was my children and my grandchildren. They are all an extremely important part of my life. I prayed for my six children. I asked the Lord for specific things in their lives. I I really hope that they don't, what's that, grieve the Spirit of God? Because I'm talking to the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will in turn talk to them, right? Now how that works? But if they grieve Him, those things that I asked and saw and knocked for may not transpire in their life. So I prayed for my six children, prayed for my seven grandchildren, and the specific things they will need in these troublesome days. Aren't we in some troublesome days? It was good not to see any news. We actually were able to not even talk about politics, Mama. Just a, it was just a good time. And I as well prayed for my two grandchildren soon to be here. Two. One. Two or one? <laughs> Tina's having twins? Or Lindsay's with child? One or the other. I walked every morning prayed for a little Joshua. A little Yoda. Prayed for my two grandchildren soon to be here. As I said, they will all need special help in these days. We live in very special help. While we were away, I guess they left church, Cody and Ray Lynn, I don't know. While we were away, Ray Lynn had her 28th birthday. Lib and I spoke about what to get her. We asked others, and no one had any ideas. I mean, what do you get someone that has everything? Cody's not here to say amen. (laughs) As I was away and thinking about all that, the Lord spoke specifically to my very being, and He reminded me of this passage, verse 13, is our text this morning. If ye... Boy, he, He just specifically, Brother Miller, while I was walking, just punched me right in the heart. He said, Michael, if ye then being evil... Now, how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? What I realized that day was what I already knew. And yet many times, I think we all do, we forget. And that is this. We as parents and grandparents want the very best for our children, don't we? We know the future will be very difficult for them. We want them safe, don't we? We want them secure. And we want them to live a satisfactory life. Well, so much more does Christ for us. I want to illustrate something this morning. Probably have a lot of verses of Scripture. And uh, see if we can get somewhere today to help somebody. What if I said, Caleb, to you this morning... Within this package lies everything you'll ever need in life. Everything. Don't we, when we try and think of a gift for somebody, we try and think of a gift that will suit them? It'll fill a need. You know, Brother Jeff, how many fishing poles has probably Melanie got you? No, you probably don't let her buy you fishing poles, do you? Because it'll be a Zebco. And it needs to be a lose or a... That's probably low tier, isn't it? What's a high tier? Uh, Fenwick. Fenwick. 
And we try and find presence that will fit the need, something that will fill the void. But can, can you? what if I just sat this down here this morning and I said to whoever wants it, you will never be without every situation, every circumstance, every problem, every difficulty can be satisfactorily fulfilled in this present. In the loss of somebody, in those lonely moments, in those times of confusion. Com what? Wouldn't you like that? When you just, you, you, you ever watch kids sometimes at Christmas and other times birthdays? They just, Wesley, just <laughs> looks at it, goes to the next one. And we as evil beings, now I know there's a group out there that just could care less, Brother Jeff. They don't, they're not there for the birthdays. They're not there for the anniversaries. It pains me sometimes. Um, <clears throat> Grandparents' Day was while I was away. You, you think anybody called me? Do you think anybody contacted Papa and Gigi and said, I just want you to know you are by far the most absolute grandparents we've ever had? And back home is waiting a 63 split window Chevy Corvette just for you, Dad. No. Because I got dirt bags for kids. No, seriously, though, could you imagine? And yet, here's, here's the problem in our churches today. Every, we sing this song. He's all I need. He's all I need. Christ is all I need. And yet, look at all the things that we chase after. Look at all the things that we... Can you imagine some days how he must feel when he looks down? Mom, Dad, you ever bought somebody something and, you and you're just sitting back and you're going, that's the perfect gift for them. And you just sit back and they open it up. And it's, I, I can see Caleb doing it. Well, what do you think, Caleb? No, I like it, Dad. No, it's nice. You know what I'm saying? I wonder sometimes how he must feel if we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children. And then he gives it the greatest gift any one of us could ever receive was given to us at salvation. And yet, watch this now. We reject it so many days and put something else in place of it. Now watch this. Ever since the garden and man was separated from God, having that personal day-to-day -day relationship, God knew exactly what we needed. And He has done everything He can possibly do to get to that point. Now let's fast forward. He's with the disciples. Watch this. I'm getting somewhere. If you're a student of the Bible, you see him preparing his disciples for the time that would come, then he wouldn't be with them anymore in person. They had grown accustomed to his miracles. I mean, hey, we're hungry. Boom. Loaves and fishes. Hey, we're on a boat. We're fixing to capsize. Boom. Peace be still. Hey, this person come to us and said he's blind. Whew, there's your sight. Can you imagine how... Now watch this now. Now they're getting to the end and all of a sudden he's saying, Hey, I'm going to have to go. No, 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 no. No, we don't... You almost get... You know what I'm saying? You get attached to that. You get attached to that confidence and that provision and all those kind of things. Watch what he says in John 14. I think this is something we miss so much. The Benny Hens and all those Joel Olsteins and all those crazy Cooley folks just absolutely destroy it for us. We're almost, we're almost put off with 
this thought of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost of God, the Comforter. Watch what he says in John 14. He said, let not your heart be troubled. They're bothered. He's talking about this fact, I've got to go. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He says, in my Father's house are many mansions. Most preachers that quote that passage of Scripture highlight the mansions at a future date than what he wanted to give them for their present tense. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also, and whither I go ye know. He says, in the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father. Philip, were you not listening? And it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Remember, he's encountered them, he's saved them, he's called them. Now he wants to empower them because it can't just stop. This, 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 the, um, what is it called? What's the theological term when Christ, the incarnation of Christ, that God dwelled in Christ and now he's manifested himself to us. Now he's shown these disciples this and now these disciples have to take this message so that we understand that concept or else they're awful selfish. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, verse 13, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you, here it is, another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. He says, my time here is only short. I came to fulfill something Christ says, and we know what He was fulfilling. He was fulfilling power over sin. He lived a victorious life filled with the Spirit of God, sinless, and now He dies, buried, resurrected, and He says, I want to show you that that is possible in you, but you can only do it with the Comforter. Verse 17, Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth Him. He says, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. He says, I'm dwelling with you now. The very same thing that you have now in my presence, now you're going to have personally inside of you. Whew. You ever wave at him, Brother Miller? They go to college. They pack up their stuff and they walk away. Those were some devastating days in my life. The empty nest. Because you know what? I had control, I guess you could say. If something happened, if a situation occurred, if they had a bad moment, a bad day, difficult moments, what can you do? You can comfort them. You're there, your presence. And then I, I still have on my phone, she probably doesn't know it, she called me late one night from college. And I just sat there and I said, Lord, I see, here's where we miss it, Mom, Dad. We have one responsibility to be the caretaker for God's children. And teach them one concept that God wants to dwell with inside of them. So that when they leave, they can be successful. Not as the world sees successful, but as God sees successful. He's trying to teach that to the disciples. He says, I will not leave you comfortless, verse 18, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. And that day ye shall know that I am in the Father. And ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them. He it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. He knew what they needed. What they always needed from the beginning. And that was that Christ our Lord wants to have an intimate, personal relationship with us. 
You know, that's where so many people miss it. I'm a church member. I'm religious. I go to this church. I go to that church. I go to Sunday school. I teach this. I'm a deacon. I'm a this. I'm a that. I'm the other thing. All the while missing the very thing that he wanted most in all of us. A personal, intimate relationship. It was broken in the garden, and he has done everything possible to restore that relationship since. Days before he dies and gives his life for ours, he mentions to them this gift that he wanted them to have. Can I say this as a side note for a moment? I think we do Christ and Christianity a disservice by relinquishing salvation to missing hell. You know what's happened? We have raised a generation of children... Uh, we've had a multitude of ministries, and I'm not against preaching on hell. I think it's very important. Many people will say Christ talked about hell more than anything else in the New Testament. I'd have to disagree with that. Christ dwelt, dealt more with the indwelling presence of His Spirit. And so what we do, we, we almost put a fear into somebody. You need to be saved, and we all do need to be saved. And you need to flee the wrath to come, and we all need to flee the wrath to come. But what we don't realize is they do that out of fear, and I'm not doubting anybody's salvation. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of this, they have no indwelling presence of God to live from day to day. And so now we have a multitude of people that have made a profession of faith and escaped the wrath to come, but live a unsatisfied, unsatisfactory, and unspirit-filled Christian life from a day-to-day -day basis. There's no empowerment to go to church. There's no empowerment to worry about anybody else being saved. There's no empowerment to be successful in the Spirit. We just live until that time comes, and then we're going, and I'm not going to hell, thank the Lord. Jesus said it like this. He said, and I give unto them life. That's eternal. I have it. I'm an eternal being today. My name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I have a placemat at the Lord's Supper table waiting, and I have a new name written down in glory. It's a white stone they'll hand me at that time. But until then, he said, I'm not only giving unto them life, but watch this, life more abundantly. Do you know what the average Christian is missing today? The abundant Christian life. Just look at them. Just talk to them. First thing they do, a situation occurs, a problem comes up, and it's immediately, I've got to be put on the prayer chain. I'm not, problem, I'm not bothered by that. But you know the very first person that ought to have a conversation with you? And we sing these songs, He's all I need. And in many aspects, we don't believe what we say we believe and we sing. Back to the birthday. What if I said to Ray Lynn or anyone, as I already have this morning, I have a gift for you. And this gift is so special, you'll never need anything else in life. How many, you know, we get Black Friday coming up, where they just literally make a fool out of themselves to get a big screen television. The latest iPod, the latest EarPod 2s, whatever it is. And, and we do it. We say this, I say this a lot, His mercies are new every morning. And I, I illustrate it by this, there's a box of mercy waiting for us. But more importantly than this, there's the indwelling presence of the Comforter. The greatest thing is ever known to man dwells within a believer. We pressure him to get saved, Watch this. Preachers get so bad with this nowadays, it's repeat this prayer after me. I prayed a prayer. I prayed a prayer on such and such a day and such and such a time and missed the whole concept. If that's all Jesus was worried about, watch this when he was sitting there, he's saying, they said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Do you know, can I just go off target for a second? Do you know why I believe he said teach us to pray? Because they watched him pray. And he'd pray for things and God would provide those things. He'd struggle with things and God would provide a path through that. And they sat there and they were so enamored by it that they said, Lord, teach us to pray. We, we need that. And he says, after this manner pray ye. 
at the end of it, then he gives this illustration. Who of you, if his son asked for this, would he give him this? Who of you, if his son asked for this, would he give him this? Who of you that needed something for a friend would go to this person and say, my friend has need? And he'd say, I'd give him that because of his importunity, because of his constant, constant coming back and asking for. And yet we don't teach that to our children. How many young people today, even those ones on the streets, are, have testimonies of being raised in Christian homes and yet can't survive? Because we as parents failed them. We didn't tell them about the most precious thing. We want them to get saved. It's almost like we get them, they get saved in Sunday school and then all of a sudden we just check out from there on out. Whew. Whew, he got his insurance policy. But we don't, here, here's where Eli failed Samuel. Eli failed to inform Samuel that God wants to talk to you personally. So all of a sudden, now all of a sudden God comes to Samuel as a little child and says, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel runs to Eli because he's thinking of a physical voice, not realizing it's a spiritual voice. Boy, have I failed in this area so many ways. And we should be teaching it. Watch this. We teach our children the Bible with the Father's voice that when they get ready to walk out the door, the voice of the Father and the voice of the Father are synonymous with one another and are speaking to them to be able to provide for them. So again, I ask you, how many would want that? Alicia, I see tears in your eyes. I'm sure you're sitting there with, with needs that you have, and you'd say, boy, wouldn't that be great? I mean, how much was that worth? if it provides everything you ever needed. I want to preach on this thought this morning. Very simple. Heaven's help. Heaven's help. God knew we needed help. So you know what He did? Isn't He wonderful? Man, He knows what He's doing, doesn't He? Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. Comforter. Greek word paracletes. Paracletes literally means to come up beside. How many people have I talked to and they, they have difficulties and I understand it. That, that's what we're here for as pastors. And they're needing something and you, you don't want to sound ridiculous and say, well, the Holy Spirit's presence is what you really need. But isn't that what we really... Can you imagine if all of us today got indwelt with the Holy Spirit of God? Now, here's, here's the difficulty part of this. We as people in this church are supposed to be indwelt with the Spirit of God. Do you know why? So that we can go out there and help them to understand, here's what will help you, sir. Here's what will fix that situation. You need the indwelling presence of God Almighty. And they look at you in your life and you say, yeah, you had, I remember when you lost your spouse. I remember when you had cancer. And I always wondered how you were able to make it through it. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. Where do you think that salt and that light comes from? But I'm saying this to myself, how many times I grieve the Spirit of God, not allow Him to minister Himself in my life. Watch this, He just wants to indwell us so that in His absence, the Holy Spirit takes that place and other people see that. And other people see, how is it that you're making it in this same world that I'm in? I had a long conversation with family members since I've been gone and I'm trying my best to figure out a way to not be so dogmatic but yet what is it? Taste and see. Put some salt. Isn't it a sad day that bars understand this concept and churches don't? Well, what do you mean preacher? Bars will put popcorn and pretzels and salty chips on a counter. Why? To get you to drink. Be not drunk with wine. The Bible says wearing is accessible. What? Be filled with the Spirit. We will not live a salty enough life so that other people say, man, I'm thirsty for that. Man, well, how is it that you have that? What is it that, what is the difference about you that I, I need that for me? And we don't do that. We don't teach that. We don't live that. Heaven's help. I just want to give you a couple things real quick. I'll not be able to exhaust them in what the Holy Spirit does. God, just like you and I, fathers, 
being evil, not how to give good gifts. I came home the other day and Josh said, Dad, your birthday's coming up. What would you like? Hey, I like that. 63 Corvette split window. They'll do that before I retire, I'm sure, because they love me. Right? Right, Miss Grace? My children love me. And he asked me what I'd like, and I'm, I'm sitting here thinking in the same aspect while all that's spinning around in my head, here's what you need. This is what we all need today. Can I say November 4th and the days ahead are going to be some really bad days? Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. We are fixing to go into some of the most troublesome times this, this world may have ever known. And yet he says, and lo, I will be with you always, even unto the what? End of the world. But yet I, I'm so enamored by how many Christians think that some man is going to fix it all. Some presidential candidate can bring all the answers and bring our economy back and bring all the things back. And that's not what God wants. God doesn't want America great. He wants his children by birth and creation great. And how do we become great? The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you these and I'll be done. First thing, heaven's help. Heaven's help, he saves us. Now that seems so trivial. Think about that for a moment. I never could have been saved without the Holy Ghost. And God understood that concept. Let me give you a verse of Scripture. Titus 3 and verse 1. Titus, Paul said to Titus, a preacher of a church, trying to understand this concept, he says, watch this, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. He says, for we ourselves also we're sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful, and hating one another. But after that, the, watch this now, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. How? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost which He shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. You can't even be saved without the Holy Spirit. And God knew that. Watch this, Ephesians 2, I believe it's at the beginning, isn't it? And you hath He quickened, who were dead in your trespasses and sins. We're a three-part being. We're a body, soul, and a spirit. Hebrews 4 talks about that. And the Word of God divides even to the various sunder of bones and, and, and emotions and all that kind of stuff. The Bible, uh, the, the, the body, soul, and the spirit. And watch this. That Spirit of God quickens us. It speaks to us. It brings us alive and it says to us, we need God. That's why it's important to have preaching. That's why it's important to have the Bible. Because it convicts. And it speaks to a person's heart. There's people in here this morning. You know as well as I do, you're lost. And here's the problem. You're listening to the multitudes and you're saying, I'm okay. I'm so tired of hearing Christians say, I'm okay. And when you begin to delve into how they're okay, it's a comparison. And Paul said to the Corinthian church, we're not to compare ourselves among ourselves. Our comparison is not me and Caleb or me and Alicia or Megan and Michaela and so on and so forth, Aurora and Ken Miller. Our comparison is Christ who lived a holy life. And dwelt, showing us that we cannot make it without the indwelling presence. Heaven's help wants to save us. The Holy Spirit convicts our heart, says to us, we're none of His. He saves us. Let me ask you a question this morning. You saved? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt the day you got saved? Do you know without a shadow of a doubt that God told you one day you're lost, you're none of mine, that you're separated from me? Now watch that. That is a transaction from heaven. Why? Because He's not willing that any man should perish, but all come under repentance. Everyone, we sit here and sometimes we look at other people. I was, I was bothered, Brother Miller, yesterday. Preacher friends of mine discussing B Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death. 
The, the ink ain't even dried on her death certificate, and they're talking about it. And I say to myself, how callous can a person be that that woman needed Christ just as much as anybody else? And the only way she can get saved is through the Holy Spirit of God. But yet it becomes some kind of political partisanship. That people that, don't, that, that, that aren't conservative should die and go to hell. Who, 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 who comes up with that stuff? He's not willing that any man should perish. He's not willing that any person on the street corner or any person in a palace somewhere dies and goes to hell. And so we, we present hell as some place we don't want anybody to go to. And then they make a profession of faith and then they have nothing to live with on a day-to-day -day basis. He saves us. Are you saved in here this morning? Let me ask you more importantly than this. You may be saved in here this morning, but you spirit-filled? Do you have His empowerment on a day-to-day -day basis? There's people spirit, that have the Spirit of God living inside of them don't even come to Sunday school class to learn more about Him. Don't go out on visitation to tell somebody else that Christ wants to save them. What a shame. What an atrocity. He saves us. Number two, the Holy Spirit. Heaven's help. Not only He saves us, He secures us. 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according, watch this, to His abundant mercy, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Verse 5, all of that is waiting for me. Here's verse 5 though. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. I'm going to tell you what, there's some people going to get there they are going to be surprised because it wasn't by works of righteousness which they have done. It's the Spirit of God that keeps us. I don't know how people... i tell you what, it's a prideful denomination that teaches somebody you can lose something that you did nothing to get or keep. 2 Corinthians 1 and verse 2. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now He which establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God, who hath also sealed us and given us the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. You buy a house, what do you do? Put down earnest money, don't you, Brother Miller? You know what that earnest money is? It's a, it's a sign to that seller that you are beyond just interested in their property. You're committing to their property that you will follow through with the purchase, the sale and purchase of that property. And here's so you know I'm serious, I'm going to give you some earnest money. And that earnest money means if you default, or if I default on the purchase of that, then guess what? You keep all that money. Can Christ be separated? So what he says to us is he said, here, until you get completely purchased, meaning out of what we're in and in our new body and with him, here's an earnest of that inheritance that you have laid up for you in store. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit of God. Now when does he take that away? What do you have to do to take that away? He tells us in John chapter 10 that he's in his Father's hand and we're in his hand and nothing shall separate us. He secures us. Here's another one, Ephesians 1. In verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Watch this, in heavenly places. That's heaven's help. In Christ, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Somebody ought to shout there. Wherein He hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, that we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Verse 13, look at this. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, 
the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. He cared so much. I, you know, can I say this this morning? Can I just be mushy for a minute? I wish to goodness I could walk and stand up over my children, my grandkids, and just, however it's done, rub them on the forehead, hug them real tight, kiss them on the ear, and seal them so they'd never have a problem in the world. I can't do that. But can I say this? Christ in the Holy Spirit can and does. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of His glory. What a gift. What a gift. Heaven's help saves us. Secures us. Here's another one. He sanctifies us. Remember when before I've said many times that I gave Him my ashes? And He in turn gave me beauty. He sanctifies us. Now I don't believe that God dwells in a building. But can I say this? A church ought to be sanctified. Let me explain this. It ought to be set apart for God's service. Reclaimed. There's a lot of people that will... Years ago, they'd buy a storefront, they'd buy a purchase, purchase a piece of property and sanctify it. They'd set it apart for what? For God's use. This is a church house. In the church house, we're not going to do this. We're not going to act like heathens. We're not going to. This is not an auditorium. This is not a stage for entertainment. It's a place that God can have free reign with His people and it can be set apart for God's glory and His benefit. Can I say this? When God saves us, and He seals us or secures us, you know the next thing He wants to do? He wants to sanctify us. Caleb, you have talents. You do well with playing the piano. You've come a long way. But can I say this? God is sanctifying in you use for His glory. But you can take that and distort it. And how many people? How many Whitney Houstons? And... Uh, uh, all the other Gladys Knight and Elvis Presley and all the people that, and all these country western singers that think every once in a while they do a Christmas gospel CD, they're okay. They've taken and, and what's the word I'm looking for? Sold it off to the devil. Defiled it. You're sanctified. You have the Holy Spirit. Of, know ye not that your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit? He said, therefore what? Glorify God in your body. Man, there's just some things, ladies, you ought not to do, right? I'm sanct I'm, I'm indwelt by the Spirit of God. There's some places I ought not to go. There's some things I ought not to do. There's some things I ought not to wear. There's some things I ought not to say. There's some things I ought not to see. Why? Because He sanctified us. And every place you go that is of the baser sort and is of the devil's palace, guess what? You take Him there. That is a sobering reality. And you wonder why we don't hear from God sometimes. We wonder why we haven't had His help. You know why? Because we've grieved Him to the point where He's just... Romans 15, verse 14, And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort is putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. That's what the Jews had such a struggle with in the early church. They thought they were God's chosen people and therefore could God really do anything with a Gentile? Whew. Well, I'm glad He nailed all that to the cross. Because now when, you're, when you grow up on the other side of tracks, Brother Jeff, and you get the indwelling presence of God, you realize you're just, I sit at the same table as anybody else. I'm sanctified. You sanctified this morning? You allowing God to set you apart? You ask, are you asking God for Him to do something very special in your life. Let me give you these and I'll be done. He schools us. Brother Robido might have seen me the other day. Somebody asked a question. What are some good books for what was the what was it? What was the topic? Marriage or something? 
Do you remember Brother Robidoux? Discipleship. What are some good discipleship books? And everybody was throwing... They're good books. Brother Rob's used them. I've used them. They're throwing these out. And I waited a couple days and then I said, the Bible? I was joking. I mean, these were good men. They were, they were asking a serious question. I said, the Bible? And I said, underneath it, I said, somebody had to say it, didn't they? Can I just say this this morning? This is what's been so sweet. I do my little routine. I put my little... Whatever they are. What are they, Josh? The black ones? Skull candy. Because my kids are too cheap to buy me AirPod Pros for my birthday. Say amen right there. Amen, Lindsay. And um, I'd put those things in, and I'd walk around listening to the Scriptures. Do my podcast. Do my songs. Oh, man. There's something about just good music, isn't there? Singing to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart is unto the Lord. I, I'm, I mean, these people in that subdivision I was in the other day, they must have thought I was crazy. Hoodie, 90 degree weather hoodie, sweatsuit, soaking, sopping wet, and I'm just walking along going, <laughs> listening, listening to I have been blessed. God's been good in my life. Somebody walked by me and I was wiping tears over my eyes. He said, you okay? I said, praise the Lord. You know why? Because he schools us. Can I say most of our problems are because we don't allow God to teach us and talk to us? We have the greatest book written by the greatest author with the greatest teacher. He schools us. 1 John 2 Verse 26, he said, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie. And even as it that taught you, ye shall abide in him. Jesus even told his disciples in verse, chapter 14, verse 26, he said, But to comforter which the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Teach me all things. Man, I could keep going. Let me give you these. 2 Corinthians 5, if you want to write them down. He says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we, ju we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. I wrote down, he subdues us. Caleb, come here real quick. I'm sorry. Moses, Noah. What, no, yeah. Bible character. This is probably one of the most precious things that we have. The Holy Spirit's subduing. Now watch this now. There's a lot of things that come to us on a day-to-day -day basis. Can I, can I just say there's a lot of things that attract me? I wish my family would have shielded me from a lot of things. There's a lot of things on a day-to-day -day basis that go into these five doorways. Ears, eyes, touch, taste, smell, that enter the soul, the very being of a person. And if you can destroy the soul, then will you even strive after the Spirit? Here's what happens. The older he gets, mom, dad, he's going to have his attractions towards things. That's why it's important as a little child for him to be saved, to have the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit of God living inside of him that watches, will empower him, will save him, will secure him, will seal him, and will subdue him. Noah's going to have a tendency to go in certain directions. He'll be drawn to things. Isn't that what the devil's desire is? To tempt us? And in the process of that, if we'll allow him, God constrains us. No, don't go after that. You don't need that. That'll hurt you. There's a lot of things I've watched my children endure and go through. And don't we as parents, Brother Colossa, just want to reach out and say, I wouldn't embarrass my children, but there's many times, there's many times I just, I see the propensity. I see the desire. I see it in church members. 
I talk about the time machine, but can I say this as a pastor sometimes? When I don't see you or I watch you do something else or you go after something else, there's a part of me that says, oh, no, please. Please don't. You don't know where that's going to take you. You don't know the path that's going to put you on. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. You'll pay more than you want to pay. It'll keep you longer than you want to stay there. And you know what? There's a lot of it you'll lose out there. You'll never get back. Maybe we ought to preach one day on wasted substance. He wasted all his substance. The Holy Spirit speaks. You know how many times I've, the flesh just goes. And all of a sudden, here, here's why it's, it's just good to give some people some time and some space. Mom, dad, family members, everything else. Because sometimes in all that hustle bustle, God can't say to you, no, stop. Don't go after that. Can I just say, can I just be honest for a minute? Sometimes in the hustle and bustle of things, before you know it, you're right in it. I'm not talking about anything grievous. Can I say this also too? I think one of the biggest sins that we commit is the sin of omission. He subdues us. He supplies us. Galatians 5, verses 13 through 26. Ephesians 5, verses 1 through 18. Read those later on. Watch this. He says, For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful work of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done in secret. Where are the lists of the fruit of the Spirit? Here it is, Galatians 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. He says if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Can I just say this? There is none of these nine fruit that we are able to produce in and of ourselves. You want to love some? I love it when lost people say, I love you. You don't know what love is. God is love. Peace. Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. He supplies us. I'm thankful for the... Do you realize that whatever you've done since you've been saved, that got a credit or a reward or whatever you want to call it, a crown or a jewel. There's a biblical term for it is not of you, it's of Him. There's going to be a lot of people there with nothing because they want the rewards here instead of there. He subdues us, He supplies us. Can I say this? He scolds us. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 17. I'm closing. Hebrews 12. Let me just read these. Watch this. I love this passage of Scripture. Hebrews 12. I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. Hebrews 12. Wherefore, seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the, endured the cross, despising the shame, set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. He says, you've not resisted unto blood, striving against sin, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. Watch this now. We've forgotten it. Can, can I just say this? We've forgotten it sometimes. Can I say, while I was away, God scolded me. And I was so thankful there wasn't nothing around me in the peripheral that I was able to hear the scolding. How many parents, you, you try and scold and they're just so busy. And you have to pull them out of what they're in. Grab their attention. Focus. And pull them off to the side. Watch this now. You've forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. And scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. He, if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? Can I say this? I've watched some people children of the family or so-called do things that I can't do and never get scolded for it. 
I solved that equation a long time ago. God said to me, he didn't tell me who was and who wasn't, but he just said, they do that because they're not my children. I don't let my children act any old way. He supplies us. He scolds us. Lastly, this. This is probably one of the things that I appreciate the most, although all of those, and there's so many more that are very special. This is one that is very near and dear to my heart. Romans chapter 8. And this is it. This is my last one. I hope I've helped somebody. Romans chapter 8, verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. He supplicates for us. Hebrews chapter 4, you hear me quote it a lot. For we have not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find help in a time of need. He sits at the right hand of the Father. You say it seems like He's divided. No, He's all one. Right is power. Christ is the power of the throne. The Holy Spirit is the provision of the throne. And He sits up there on a day-to-day basis. There's not a problem you have this morning, but He doesn't have an answer for it. Now, if you're saved in here this morning, you have that living inside of you. You don't need a gift. Alicia, I could say to you this morning, I'm going to adopt you. You'll never have a care in the world, any problems, any difficulties. I say it to mine all the time, Caden or Wesley or one of them, and I'll say, no. Papa will always be there. Papa will help you. Papa will take care of that. Papa will will do whatever he needs to do. The truth of the matter is that's a lie. So I won't always be here. But can I say this morning, Christ knew that? And he says, if ye being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? I'm going to tell you what, and I, I know this, but I was reminded of it. I just stopped when I was walking, and I just sat there and I said, Lord, I wish I could understand that concept when I first got saved. And I said, why is it that I got to get to the end of my journey to understand how much of a help you could have been at the beginning of my journey? You know why? Because we spend so much time on all the peripheral. I sat in churches that told me all the things I shouldn't do instead of all the things I could do in Christ through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Someone's coming to the piano. Let me ask you this question. If it was me, I, I just, I, here's what I, Michael, this is what Michael Lovett does at Christmas. I go, my kids have gotten to the point where they can't trick me. I know what it is. So now they try and do different sizes and all different kinds of stuff. And Josh got me a little pocket knife last year, puts it in a box, 14 sizes, too big, and tries to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? And I just, you, you just sit there with anticipation. You say, man, what's that going to be? And how much of a blessing is that going to be? But can I say this? We sit on our pew this morning. If you're saved, you have that inside. You're just not using it to your ability. And if you're not in here, if you're in here this morning and not saved, That's exactly what God wants to give to you. There's some tough days coming ahead. The trick is, or the 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 the, not the trick, the the success of that is it is understanding. It's not by power. You know, I used to think, Brother Miller, when I was younger, man, I could man, I could conquer anything. Military, law enforcement, all that stuff. It's not by power. It's not by might. He said it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Father, we'd ask you to help us this morning in here. I probably feel like I did an injustice with such a, just such a large topic. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for his presence in our lives. Help us as believers to not grieve him. Lord, I realize all those places in the scriptures where it says let is just an indication that you're teaching us that we should allow 
the Holy Spirit to work in our lives in such a way. And yet so many times we're so scared and spooked by it because so many places and people have done such a disservice to the Holy Spirit. But we'd ask you to help us in here this morning. If there's somebody that doesn't know you as Savior, I pray today would be that day that you'd love to give them that gift and give them life, and not only life, but life more abundantly. And Lord, for those of us in here that are believers and yet don't lean on you as you had to teach Jacob and wrestled with him until he leaned upon that staff, we'd ask you to help us this morning to not grieve the Spirit of God and to allow Him to have more full reign in our lives. Fill us with Your Spirit. Help us recognize His presence. Help us this morning, I plead. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Miss Grace is playing something on the piano. If God has spoken...